my name is Stephen Fox. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how artificial intelligence is holding up the market and is propelling it forward for the most part. Even on days like today that the market went down, my artificial intelligence stocks went up. Four out of the five went up and two of them went up dramatically. The ones that I'm most heavily invested in, NVIDIA and Super Microcomputer Symbol SMCI, they literally exploded upward. And I think a lot of the mega caps are being propelled forward to the degree that they're in artificial intelligence. The market went down on Monday. The NASDAQ went down 0.2%. The S&P 500 went down 0.32%. Industrials went down 0.71%. So the general market, it it was not that good of a day. My NVIDIA stock went up 4.8%. <laughs> A super microcomputer, SMCI, went up 14.4%. Super microcomputer, they named that stock right. Broadcom, whose symbol is AVGO, went up 1.5%. ASML went up 1.1%. AMD Advanced Micro Devices, that went down 1.9%. That is the stock that I'm least <laughs> invested in. And I feel like I should be a little bit in it because they are developing some good chips and Musk has been buying their, their chips lately. There must be something to it. So my artificial intelligence stocks went up because of artificial intelligence and not because the general market was going up because it didn't. There are some myths I want to dispel. Uh, we are nowhere near a recession. You cannot have jobs numbers like the numbers we're having and be going into a recession. The jobs numbers last Friday, the non-farm payrolls, came in at 353,000 jobs. 187,000 jobs were expected, so it was way higher than what was expected. And they revised the previous month to be 333,000 jobs. Now, when you're anywhere over 200,000, you have very bullish employment. The unemployment rate is like 3.7%. The employment market indicates that recession is nowhere near. Also, on this Monday when the market went down, part of the reason the general market went down is because the interest rate on 10-year bonds went up to 4.16%, and that was like 13 basis points above where it had been. So I drug the general market down, but my artificial intelligence stocks keep going up. I noticed that the big mega caps, the ones that really use a lot of artificial intelligence, Microsoft is the primary one simply because they came up with chat GPT and are benefiting so strongly from that. They have surpassed Apple in in their market capitalization and their over three trillion dollars is chat gpt has propelled them up in many ways you know a person hates to say this just because you know it hasn't been done very often but we may be achieving this the soft landing it's still in doubt to an extent but we might be getting there the trueflation rate uh, there's a site called trueflation.com that uses many more sources of data than the government uses to measure inflation. And they say that the current inflation rate is 1.4%. The federal government acknowledges that for the last six months, it's been about 1.65% each month that they've measured it. That is below their 2% mark, but they're very hesitant to lower the interest rate because they want to make sure that's down low enough that it doesn't go up again. They're having post-traumatic stress from the 1980s because it was so dramatic when Paul Volcker started to lower interest rates thinking he had conquered it and 
then it sprang up again. So they don't want a repeat of that movie. They know how that movie goes. They would rather err on the side of tightening a little bit too much than not enough. They are being cautious. And you can you can tell during the interviews that I've watched that they are very cautious. And it's all the, the spirit of, yeah, we like how it's going, but that thought is in the back of their mind. We remember what happened to Volcker, and we don't want to repeat it. The technology sector, which is XLK, went up about 0.2%, and I think that was on a day where the general market went down, and I think that's mainly because of artificial intelligence. I think technology is the area to be in. That's the area I'm going to focus on with this channel uh, from this point forward. I can see the horizon. I can see artificial intelligence has years to run. I almost want to say decades and maybe we should say centuries, but I won't be that wild. (laughs) Of course, when you talk about artificial intelligence, you have to talk about NVIDIA. And part of the reason it stormed forward it was not very long ago I was wondering, well, is NVIDIA going to make 700? Well, it ended the day at 693. So I guess we've answered that question. But And part of the reason it went to 693 on this Monday is because a Goldman Sachs analyst raised the price target from 625 to 800. So now 800 is on the docket. Is SMCI super microcomputer, is that the next NVIDIA? NVIDIA is up an astounding 1,700% in the last five years. Now, SMCI is up 98% year to date. The main thing with SMCI, super microcomputer, is they make servers that are complex enough that can handle artificial intelligence. They also make storage and security equipment. They're vital to artificial intelligence, and that is why everyone is so bullish on this stock for the most part. Supermicro founder and CEO Charles Liang summed up the market landscape on a recent earnings call. Supermicro is at the forefront of the AI revolution, where the pace of innovation is accelerating. We are leading the race by developing the most innovative AI infrastructure on many platforms at rack scale for almost any industry and for any market vertical. We are in overdrive to accelerate our business model with this AI boom In the meantime, we are preparing ourselves for the next phase of our business growth. Now is certainly the most exciting time yet for Supermicro. ASML is a Dutch company that has a virtual monopoly on the type of equipment that they they use to transfer. It's called lithography equipment. It's used to transfer the electronics onto these small and very dense chips. The smaller and denser uh, these electronics get, the more difficult it is to transfer them onto the chips. And ASML has no competition. In fact, they keep coming up with machines that will put smaller and more dense electronics onto the artificial intelligence chips. There's no one else that does this, to my knowledge. And Broadcom, I could give you a big, long explanation of what they do, and I'm showing you part of what they do, uh, but it really is... Uh, too involved and they do too much to actually explain it in one or two sentences. Uh, But the best way to explain it, and the only way I found to explain it, is to say that Broadcom connects everything to everything. And so (laughs) if you're willing to accept that as a condensation of the monstrosity of a description you're going to get from other sources, uh, I will be thankful. And AMD, I only have about like $60,000 in it. And I even question whether I should take that money and put it into NVIDIA. But I feel like I should have some in AMD just because so many people buy it that watch this channel. And part of the attraction is the lower price. And I understand that. But I feel that you can make better returns with NVIDIA and Super Microcomputer. Now, Super Microcomputer, you're going to be given a wild ride. That is a wild stock. 
And for all of these stocks, I recommend putting a trailing stop limit order on so that when they come down, and they will come down, and they will have dramatic times when they come down, that you get bailed out. And looking at the three-month chart, you can see that ASML and AVGO, which is Broadcom, <clears throat> each made about 38%. NVIDIA made about 47%, but the surprise was AMD made about 58%. That surprised me. Maybe I should quit bad-mouthing AMD so much. But the star of the show easily is Super Microcomputer SMCI comes in at 160% in three months. Wow. It is a wild stock. You want to have your stop loss limit ready on those so that it applies in the pre-market and post-market sessions also. But if you can stand the ride, Super Microcomputer will take you higher. It'll also take you lower at times, but you got to withstand the centrifugal forces surrounding you when those moments happen. Uh, thanks for listening and watching. I'll be back. I'm trying not to make these too long because I want to get the information out to you. Uh, these stocks are hotter than hot. Uh, if you don't have FOMO at this point, I admittedly have FOMO. I am in FOMO right now. FOMO is not always wrong. Sometimes it's very right. I was in FOMO when I was buying Tesla and I made half a million dollars on it. You just got to know when to FOMO and when not to FOMO. <laughs>